So come here and let's do some peas. We've been talking today about what can people do to pass a bit of time. Well, what I'd say first of all is start up for some containers and we've got loads of recycled containers here. We had them off our friend at birds, didn't we? We certainly did, and don't we love birds? Yeah. And so here, Julia, is these are the half pint peas, and they're called half pint because it's the only half pint that we're going to get for a bit. But anyway, <laughs> these are called half pint because they're only small and they're perfect for tubs and containers. A bit like myself. Very similar indeed, only not, <laughs> not half the price. So these are the ones that now I'm going to repot into these containers. I've already filled at least sort of seven eighths all the way up here with uh, multi-purpose compost and I've actually put some sand in as well to help with the drainage. Yeah. And I've put two out already. Now then, let's have a look at them here. Oh, I Look at the roots yeah. now then. So, I'm going to just squidge, it's a technical phrase, mm. here. Squeeze the bottom. <laughs> <laughs> right then. And now I'm just going to oh, gently look, look at, at the that. roots on that. You see, Twiggy always wonders what we get excited about. <laughs> look at the roots on that. That's a good, healthy plant, it isn't is. it? It is. And I'm going to just take another one out as well. Just squidge it up pop it up and put down right and so i've got four here just put those back down and all i'm going to use is i'm going to use god's best tools obviously put them down there push it in firmly please do like to be in a firm bed <laughs> <laughs> well only if you've got a bad back really <laughs> and then the next one push down yeah firm in gently and then firm the next one in and then the last one just push it in okay if we leave this these in here now and, yeah. and i mean it's nice and warm for the next week or so they're really going to shoot up aren't they they are yeah and they haven't taken a minute to actually start growing we planted these that you can see here on the 22nd of february and it was quite cool then yeah but now we're forecast from thomas schaffernacker our best mate uh, <laughs> did i say that he's our hello mate? thomas schaffernacker <laughs> <laughs> and we're going to see these shoot up in no time now they won't grow any more than nine inches to a foot but there'll be an abundance of um, peas on there so the great thing is that they don't need any staking whatsoever. No. In fact, I'm going to put another one in, Julia. I'm Ooh, going a bit mad now. <laughs> you have gone mad. No, I go. think it's the sun in here. It's well, giving you a sunstroke. I'm going to do. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, look I'm at your brutal. Split. split them. Split them. Because I think we could shove a few in there. Look. And oh, I can smell them. Oh, uh -huh. it's a good job. It's not smelly vision, is it? <laughs> but yeah, put them in there them in there put them in there now then what are you going to do now are you going to go them to water? water them so don't water them to... on the table otherwise you'll wet all my things <laughs> right, right. <laughs> and the good thing is that i can do this with the handles it's like having a handbag but different <laughs> and all that you have to do who's used all the water <laughs> fill the watering can with the rose on because i don't want to drown them so i'll just do that you can see how prepared we were can't <laughs> true garden it is yeah. the best soak them well and let's see how they go on over the next few days yeah but we'll give you some updates on those actually okay yeah well, they get going i just want to tell you a little bit about these which are Ooh, tomatoes. what have you got there hang on a sec oh now i've been potting these out today and i just want to do a few things about these because these are called honeycomb and they were panards plants and penards are absolutely fabulous these i set just a few weeks ago probably two weeks ago now and they've shot up and here is a recycled it was actually something that we had some cherries in and it's got some holes in the bottom perfect I just put some multi-purpose compost sprinkled seeds over and these actually act as a little greenhouse perfect yeah, isn't it yeah absolutely no mess whatsoever so people don't need to be going out spending no. money on, on equipment they no. can just use what they've got lying around absolutely can't they? and this was up perfect so they've shot up in no time and the good thing is that now all i'm going to do is i'm going to put them into some individual pots because they're getting quite that they need to be repotted yeah i mean once they've gotten past uh, they've got developed their true leaves then they can actually be moved on so these are actually the baby leaves 
these uh, small That's ones right. here. Yeah, they're like baby teeth. But if you have a look at that, it doesn't even resemble no. a tomato leaf. Now look at that one, and it does. And you can see the difference in the shape. Yeah. Okay. So when we talk about baby leaves, that's what that's what, what we're they talking are. about. That one. And actually, most plants, most vegetable plants, have got a baby, baby leaf. leaf. Yeah. Now then, the other thing is, I don't know if you can close up on these, but they there going up the stalk they're not hairs no, they look like burly. hairs yeah. yes but they are actually individual roots now why that's important for you to know is i'm just going to get this pot here which is quite a tall plot pot, plot, <laughs> pot and i'm just comparing it for size and yeah. that will certainly hold one of those tomato plants I'm just going to get some multi-purpose compost I'm just putting a bit in the bottom. So all I've done at the mo is just put a bit in the bottom. Okay. And now get your best tool that ever was. I've damped this beforehand, by the way, because these roots could be intertangled. And you see how tall it is, but look at the root. Look at the root Ooh. on that. And we so like a good root ball. I'm not going to touch the hairs or the roots no. on the stalk. Just going to put the plant in like so. And now, come with me. I'm going to get the compost and carefully put it round the side of the plant there. And I say carefully because bear in mind that this is only a baby. Now, I push down the side with my thumb to stop any air pockets developing because any air pocket could mean that disease could get in there or you could get a pocket of water and I don't want that either no. now if you have a see I'm planting right the way up to the baby teeth the first leaves right the way up to them and then what will happen is that each of these little stalks will grow into a really thick healthy stalk to take the weight of the fruit that will eventually form. So the furry stem, actually the furry bits are all, all little roots, little aren't tiny roots and it'll make it really thick make and it a lovely. nice solid plant, won't it? Which, yeah, which is perfect really, especially if it's one that was going to go outside, you need something that's strong and going to support the plant. Yeah, and this now, I'm just going to mark it so that we know what kind it is, yeah. and this is honeycomb, because you always think that you remember what kind it was, and I'll tell you what, it's my age, but and actually it's remember. really important especially with tomatoes to know which variety they are because there's so many different varieties in terms of size color and everything yeah. but you need to know specifically whether it is a, a cordon variety or a, or previously called indeterminate or whether it's a bush variety and we can do another session on bush varieties because i think bushes yeah. And now you look after your bush. Very <laughs> well, actually, the good thing about a bush is you don't need to let it, you don't need to look after it very much, do you? You just let it, and it's probably a better variety to grow if somebody's never grown it before. A bush variety is behave yourself, Elaine. <laughs> yes, yes, they are actually, and they're the easiest. Yeah. And we'll explain the difference why on a different film. I think we're going to talk about cucumbers. Oh, cucumbers. And now's yeah. the time to be setting them. So, folks, we keep on telling you, we will tell you what to do and when. And what I've got here is I've got a cell tray that I've just filled with multi-purpose compost. And I've patted down a little bit. Okay. Yep. Just six there. I've got here um, Telegraph Improved, and that's a variety that I particularly like <laughs> because it's a long one. And I like <laughs> a long cucumber. I know you like your stubby ones. I know I do like a short one, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you are very rude. I know where your mind is going, but yes, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, actually, that was it last year you grew that enormous one that you nearly took Twiggy out with it. So. <laughs> It was a 43 incher but Show hey up. you don't get them. <laughs> <laughs> so i just want you to close up on a cucumber seed yeah. and most of us who have eaten cucumber know what a cucumber seed looks like but these have been dried and specifically kept on one side for now growing again from so these are a big seed 
as far as seeds are concerned and I'm not putting it flat like that into the soil I'm turning it sideways so on its side I shall push it down and then just gently cover it up so on its side how deep like are you so, going with it Elaine? I'm just going to go twice as deep as the width of the seed so that would be about a quarter of an inch yeah something like that yeah okay and each cell i put one seed that's all you need to do now these do like a bit of warmth and they need the warmth in order to germinate they are very very fussy so there we go there's six and all you have to do is cover them up and I'm not going to water from the top, Julia. I'm going to give it a bath. Are you? Yeah, That's a bath nice. in here. It is rather. So all I'm going to do... Oh, sweet facilities in the polytunnel. <laughs> <laughs> and all I'm going to do is I'm going to stand it in water, like so. I've got some here, and you've been using them as well. Mm -hmm. There's some peas. All that we do is we use one that's not got holes in. <laughs> anyway, what we there's do one is behind you. Got... There's one behind you. Look. Oh yeah, yeah I've yeah. been doing these today. I've been doing the brassicas and their kale. So I'll just take that one out. No holes in that. Stand it in water until it's soaked it all up. Now then, these here, this is kale, and I can see that this has soaked up all the water it needs. It's got a dribbly bottom. It has. It's got a very <laughs> dribbly bottom. And so now I'm quite safe to take both of those out and stand them over here with the rest of the brassicas. Don't forget, what I am going to do, though, is cover that cucumber. Yeah. I'll do another set of six, but then cover it with plastic like that just to nurture them for a little while yeah. and as soon as they germinate bob's your uncle yeah fan is your aunt but i never had one no no and uh, are we going there yeah i was going to suggest a cup of tea but since it's the afternoon and it's so sh sunny shall we have some gin i think it's time for a bit of gin is it past three o'clock yes it is now Come bye on.